one more time. Oh, the glory of your presence and we your people will give you reverence. So arise to your rest and be blessed by our praise as we glory. Now feel this place and your Give God the praise. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be magnified. He's our God. Besides thee, there's no other. God is moving everywhere. He blesses us right now. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift your voices up. Say, Lord, I thank you. I praise you and I magnify you because you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be glorified. You're worthy to be magnified. You are God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's wonderful to come in the house of God and celebrate. We celebrate the day of a great leader. Hallelujah. Glory to God. A great leader that went from one place to the other in this world of ours. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. We come to celebrate. Hallelujah. Lift our voices up and say, I celebrate. 
I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, the only reason ain't got in place yet, but we're going to have some church. Well, I come into this house, magnify the Lord. Lift up holy hands, our hearts I want to call, cause he's worthy, worthy of all I pray. Oh yes, cause he's worthy, worthy of all I pray. Well, come into this house, magnify the Lord. Lift up holy hands, our hearts I want to call, cause he's worthy, worthy of all I pray. Oh yeah, cause he's worthy, worthy of all I pray. Oh, one more time. Come into this house, magnify the Lord. Lift up holy hand, our hearts are what are called, cause he's worthy, worthy of all I pray. Oh yeah, cause he's worthy, worthy of all I pray. Yeah, the worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, God, I'm worthy. I said, God, I'm worthy. Jesus is worthy. The Holy Ghost is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. My God is worthy. Worthy, Lord. My God is worthy. Worthy, Lord. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. My God is worthy, your God is worthy, our God is worthy. We gotta praise him. Worthy, 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 worthy. Come on, church. My, 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 my. Well, come into this house. Magnify the Lord. Lift up holy hands. Our hearts are well of core. Because he's, yes, he is. Come on, church. We're in church today. Because he, yes, he is. Well, 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 well. Come on, praise him, everybody. Because he's worthy for all our praise. He's worthy to be glorified. He's worthy. He's the soon coming king. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. He's wonderful. He's everlasting. He's a God that can move. He is a God that can touch. He's a God. All right. My, 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 my. Woo. The only reason is get ready to come in. Everybody. That can stand to your feet, stand to your feet at this time. I'd like to present to us, amen, our pastor and bishop, auxiliary bishop of, uh, amen, of our church today. Praise the Lord. Miracle Temple of Deliverance, First Lady Hatchet, as they come in, praise the Lord. Clap, 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 clap. Clap your hands. 
They are worthy servants. Yes, they are. Hallelujah today. We thank you, God, for them. Look at them. Look at them. Walking tall. Looking good. Hallelujah. That's what God will do. Oh, yes, he will. Hallelujah to your name, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's a wonder for they had great leaders. Hallelujah. Sometimes we should still show them appreciated because they, they are working for us on behalf of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. They speak to us as God speaks to them. Amen. They begin to share what God has given us. At this time, praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to have our old uh, Testament coming. Elder Arthur Jackson and a New Testament coming. Amen. Minister Taylor and an invocation come in at this time. Minister Greg Knox, come in that order. While you're standing, we're going to be reading in your hearing third chapter of Jeremiah, number 15, verse. This one particular verse says, I will give you pastors according to my heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. May the Lord add blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word. I'll be reading Romans 8, starting at the 37th verse. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord is blessed. Oh, sweet wonder. Oh, sweet wonder. Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, yes, Lord. Sweet wonder. Oh, hallelujah. Sweet wonder. His name is Jesus, the Son of of God, oh, how I love him, oh, hallelujah, how I love him, his name is Jesus, the Son, the Son of God, oh, how I love him. Oh, how I love him, Jesus, the Son of, of God. He's a wonder in my soul. Yes, you are, oh God. He is a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder, yes, God, in my soul. Bless his name. He's a wonder in my soul. He is a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder. In my soul, hallelujah, the total Messiah, bless his name, bless his name, yes, God, bless his name, oh, God, 
Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. We feel you here already, God. Bless his name. Bless his name. Oh, Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Glory to God. Bless his name. Bless his name. We thank you, Lord. 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 God, we thank Thomas. Hey, God, we thank you today. I know Bosaya. God, we give you glory today. God, we honor you to Bosaya. God, we honor you today. We give praise to you today. For there's nobody like you. There's no one worthy. There's no one more worthy, oh God. We've entered into your gates with thanksgiving. And we enter your courts with praise. We're thankful unto you. And we bless your holy name. You've been a good God. You've been an awesome God. You've been a wonderful God. You've been a mighty God. That's why we're here. We're here to celebrate pastoral anniversary. But we're here because you brought us here. We're here because you carried us through. You were almost sunned about. We're here because you carried us through for 18 years here in Kentucky and 28 years in total. So God, we've come to bless you. God, we've come to honor you. God, we've come to thank you for being a good God, for being a righteous God, for being a mighty God. If nothing else, God, we'll tell you thank you. If nothing else, we'll tell you thank you. If nothing else, we'll tell you thank you. What a wonderful God you are. What a holy God you are. The angels cry holy. The seraphim cry holy. The cherubim cry holy. So God, here we are in your temple. We lift you up. We bless you. We honor you, oh God. You said in your word, if you be lifted up, if you be lifted up, you'll draw all men unto you. Yes, God, we come to celebrate our leaders. But oh God, we come to lift you up. Hey, throw your weight around in this room, oh God. Do what you want to do. Let your power be here. Let your glory be here. Somebody came wanting to experience you. Somebody came wanting to encounter you, oh God. Throw your weight around. Throw your power around. Throw your glory around. And we give over to you, oh God. Touch our speaker. Anoint him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, oh God. Let the oil flow. And we'll give you praise. And we'll give you glory. And we'll bless you. And it is so. And it is so. And it is so. And it is so. And it shall not be otherwise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on and clap those hands in this place. Come on, open up your mouth in this place. Let's set this atmosphere. Hey! Amen. We thank God. Amen for the prayer. You may be received at this time. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For the poor pit. They're going to be introduced later, later time. Praise the Lord. Amen. We just want to get honor to those on the pulpit today. Praise the Lord. Amen. At this time, praise the Lord, we're going to have uh, send up Judah. We're going to praise him. We're going to praise. We're going to praise. We're going to praise God. Hallelujah. In song. At this time, send up Judah. Come on, we've come to send the glory up. I invite you all to stand with us as we give God some praise, oh, yeah. as we give him some hey. reverence. As we give him some honor, because he's worthy. I will lift my hand in victory. I will lift my hand in victory. To the most high God. 
God, we praise your name. Most high God, we praise your name. I will sing this song unto your name. I will sing this song unto your name. Worthy of honor and praise. Worthy of honor and praise. To the most, to the most.
Forever and ever. Forever and ever. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the glory. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. we stand back. Now come on and put your hands together. You get the glory. 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 It's yours. It's It's yours. It's yours. Said we sin. Gloria. Now come on and give him some glory. Hallelujah. Come on and give him some honor. Come on, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Oh. He's worthy to be praised. And because we can give him the glory, we just say thank you for everything that you've done for us so far. Thank you, Thank you for everything that you've done for us so far. Come on, somebody's called him a healer. Hallelujah. Someone's called him a deliverer. Hallelujah. Someone's called him a way maker. Hallelujah. He's been a provider for some. So we just want to tell him thank you. Come on, let thank you saturate this place. Hallelujah. Come on, tell your father thank you. Come on, tell your father thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, I am thankful. Oh, I am thankful. Lord, you've done so much for me. You've given me everything I need. And with chaos around, I still choose to say, Lord, thank you for every way you made. Right here, y'all. Lord. Lord, you've done so much for me. Come on. He's given you everything that you need. You've given me everything I need. Chaos around, with chaos around, I still choose to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Every way, every way you pay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I'm thankful to you, Lord. I'm thankful to you, Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Can we please stand as our presiding bishop comes? the I'm building for all you got and all you ever do hallelujah hallelujah Come on. I'm thankful to you I'm thankful to you to you hallelujah hallelujah come on sing in this place I'm
God that sing. Oh, come on, tell your God I'm thankful. I am thankful. Oh, 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 oh. I am thankful. I am thankful. Oh, 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 oh. I am thankful. I am thankful. Oh, oh, oh. I am thankful. I am thankful. Yes, 
he has. Come on, talk to your father. Said you've been. God, you've been so, so good. Said you've been so, so very good. Yes, you have. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you grateful in here? Come on. Thank you, Lord. Y'all help me. Y'all help me. Y'all help me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, come on, grateful people. Come on, grateful people. Come on, grateful people. Come on, come on, come on. He's a worthy. He's a worthy. That's it. Come on, if you're great. You want to release a thank you in this place. Woo. God, forever where you may, and forever door that you open for me. Oh, God, I just want to tell you thank you. Oh, yeah. Come on, give a call to pray, everybody. I thank you. I thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just say thank you. Ah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. Amen. I want you to throw, do like our pastor do. Our pastor said, throw your, look up to heaven, throw your head back and say, I thank you. That felt good. I, I, that felt good. I tell you what, that felt good. I, I believe I want to do it again. I'm throwing, I look up to heaven and say, throw your head back and say, I thank you. That's our pastor. That's our pastor. Anytime, anytime in the middle of his message, he might stop and look up to heaven. Amen. And say, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel a shout coming on here. Ah, yes. I feel my legs moving a little bit here. Because, see, I found out it's a sanctified church. This is a Holy Ghost for your church. Anytime something can uh, start happening and you start praising our God, somebody will get the moving. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory. Thank you. Uh, I know we got to go on. Got to go on. I know we got to go on, but I feel a shout. I see you do this one time. Yeah! Shout out the dance. Hallelujah! Shout out and praise God. He's a worthy. He's a worthy. Oh, 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 oh.
All right, all right. There's a Holy Ghost church. Praise him. He's a worthy. My, my, my. Well, Ooh. All right, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, mamas. Thank you. Thank Come you, on, brothers. Thank you. Come on, preachers. Thank you, Lord. Just Thank let God you. have his way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let him have his way. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lord. 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 All right. That's all right. I know you feel good. Mother Booker says, Mother Booker used to say, stay all night. Hallelujah, because that's what's our life. She ain't had nothing else to go to. We got too many things to go to. But we start putting God's first. You yeah, have a shout and praise and blessing God. All right. Don't y'all start nothing over here. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. You go ahead and praise your God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. All right. All right. My, my, my. Bishop, I think you got some praise and folk. I think you got some happy people. When you're talking about happy, amen, you're happy because you're saved. You're happy because you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You're happy because you're going to a new place. Prepare for a new people. Hallelujah. At this time, praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to have one of our mothers to come, mother, for the occasion. Amen. Mother Tony Halt, as she's come. Amen. Everybody say amen as she comes. All I know, he's worthy to be praised today. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. We just give you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We give honor to uh, the pulpit and also to our honorees, Bishop Gabriel Hatcher, my pastor, and his wife, my friend, Karen Hatcher, First Lady Karen Hatcher. The word says, and I will give you pastors according to my own heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. 
And we are here today to celebrate the pastoral anniversary for Bishop Gabriel Hatcher and his wife, First Lady Hatcher. And this is an awesome and wonderful occasion to let our pastor know how very much we appreciate him, are grateful to God for him, and to express our love toward him. For he does so much for us. He does so much for the community, the city, the state, the country, and the world. And we want to say thank, we just thank him for being such a powerful and active person in our lives. The word says, and we will, I'm sorry, we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to extend them very high in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. He is a man after God's own heart and whom truly do respect from all of us. The word says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor and especially those who labor in the word and the doctrine. Bishop Gabriel Hatcher is an explosive, spirit-filled preacher, a praying and a singing man of God. And we say thank you, Jesus, for this man of God, his wife and his family. May God's grace and his wonderful mercy continue to flow upon you. We ask it in God's name. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful for the occasion. Praise the Lord. Amen. At this time, amen, we're going to have, praise the Lord, amen, Ella Guyton come for the offertorial role. Amen. I'm going to turn this over to our superintendent, amen, Ella Burroughs at the time for the offertorial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. We certainly bless God for his goodness, his unmerited favor toward us. We honor our honorees on today, Bishop and Lady Hatcher, and to our jurisdictional bishop, John W. Fleming and his lovely wife, and to the presidium of our Church of God in Christ, Bishop Darrell Hines, general board member. Come on, let's praise the Lord for him. Oh, we can do better than that. We want him to come back again. You got to show some type of gratitude that he's here. And let's praise the Lord for our general board member. Amen. We certainly bless God for his goodness. Amen. And to my lovely wife, amen. We certainly give God glory, amen, for each and every one of you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we come to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Has the Lord been good to anybody? You know, somebody's probably looking on their cell phones or texting someone, I asked a question. Has the Lord been good to anybody? We all have a praise to go up because God's been good to us. He's been kind. Amen. I'm here to receive our offering. Amen. We thank God for our jurisdictional bishop that is here. And we're going to ask you to rest to your feet and allow him to come and have words before we go into this offertory. Let's say amen for our bishop. You may be seated. Truly, we thank God for our being here today. Thank God for another day, another opportunity to get it right. We honor Bishop Hines today, thank God, and we'll speak further on him.
them later on in the service. We honor our administrative assistant and pastor of this great church and my sister, his lovely wife. Thank God, thank God. It is a pleasure to be here. You know, it seems like when you're in a hurry, everything gets in your way. And that traffic just messed me up. <laughs> thank God, thank God. I'm going to have to learn some shortcuts. But we honor uh, our superintendent's wife, uh, all of the wives of the pastors in our jurisdiction. We honor the supervisor of India. Thank God. We honor our supervisor who's not here at the time, but faithful to the services. And I honor my little wife. Thank God. Thank God. We are here to receive an offering. I know most of the time we said take it. I'm not going to wrestle you down and take it. I'm going to receive it because I know you want to give. Thank God. The Bible tells us blessed are the cheerful. Thank God. Thank God. I added a little to that. If you're not going to be cheerful, give anyway. <laughs> and I often say, when you give cheerfully, it helps you and it helps the one you're giving to. When you don't give cheerfully, it helps the one you're giving to. So we want to help him today. <laughs> Thank God, thank God. We pray that you don't leave your part out. But we want to give an offering to him. One year is a long time to wait to be appreciated. A lot happens. Thank God. And when you are in the hierarchy of the church, much of the responsibility falls on you. And for your local church, all of it falls on the head. Because if something goes wrong and somebody's going to jail, it'll be the one who's at the head. Therefore, he has to remain prayerful and faithful to his duties. And we ought to let him know that we appreciate him in more than just words, but in action. So today we are going to receive an offering. Thank God. Prepare yourselves to give as Ella Burris is going to come back and receive that offering. I'm going to start it off with $500. And I have an offering from uh, Superintendent Hathaway of $200. So, Brother Hatcher, I mean, Brother... Burroughs is going to come and receive it. Amen. We're going to ask you that are in charge to come. Amen. I praise God. Thank God for everybody being here with us on today. We appreciate you coming to help us celebrate our Bishop Gabriel Hatcher, First Lady Karen Hatcher. And you know, Miracle Temple, stand up. We had our uh, ceremony last night. Uh, hopefully everybody gave theirs last night. But if you didn't give yours on tonight, today, Miracle Temple, you can come now. Because Miracle Temple, we want to be counted in. I gave them a challenge. You can be a part of the Platinum Club, the gold or the silver. Take your pick. You can join in too. Miracle Temple, if you didn't give on last night, come on now. Those of you that are in here, you can give to dollar sign, M-T-O-D, for cash app. Give with is open, or you can come right here now. Amen. Let us stand. We're going to ask the superintendent to bless the offering, and then you can call those names. And then musicians, I'm going to come back with, oh, oh. 
Amen. Let us all stand. Kind Father, we thank you and we bless you. We praise you for this day. We thank you for these, your people. Thank you for those that we're honoring on today. Bless them, Lord. Let this be used for the upbuilding of their kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Now bless those that give according to your word, 160 and 30 folds. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our pastor, Guyton, has given 300. Uh, myself has given 300. Uh, Superintendent Scott has given 100. Uh, our AIM chairman, Ron Jones, has given 100. Amen. And our apostle, Mark Carter, is giving 300. And our pastor, Samuel Wilson, is also giving. Is there anyone else that I omitted? At this time, we're going to put you in the hands of the usher. Let's receive them. Our jurisdictional supervisor, Mother Romanita Stallworth, $100. care to give by cash app it's to our left and your right Can you lift that offering? That same prayer will bless with this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we return this service back into the hands of the giver. Let's say amen as he comes. We thank God, amen, for the offering we received today. Amen. At this time, we have Brandon, uh, Brandon uh, Hatchet to come. Praise the Lord at this time. Where's she at? Brandy, Brandy, Hatcha. Who, Brady? Brady? I'll get it right after a while. Here you come. All right. I'll get it right. Oh, I tell you. I'll be seeing you soon. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Jeremiah 3 and 15. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. Grandma, Papa, thank you for not only being our bishop and first lady, but thank you for being wonderful, loving parents and grandparents to the entire Hatcher clan. We love you as our leaders of MTOD and as the leaders of our family. But, there, but there's someone else that wants to show you some love too. Come on, Jay. Come on, Jay. Kushi.
We thank God, amen, there's a technical situation going on. Praise the Lord, amen. We're going to go on, praise the Lord. Hopefully, we'll probably come back to them. Praise the Lord. At this time, amen, we're going to have our voice of our district. Praise the Lord, Superintendent Burroughs, as he come at this time. The voice of our district. We got the best superintendent there is, didn't we? We was a dancers together. We shout together. We preach together too. All right. <laughs> Thank you. At this time, this is uh, a superintendent. Amen. Barrel's coming. Amen. The house has been addressed. We certainly thank God. Amen. For these honorees on today. Amen. Amen that we are honoring. Amen. We certainly bless the Lord for his goodness. I could say a whole lot about this young man and his beautiful wife. When they came to Kentucky, we hooked up and we've been friends ever since. I supported he and his wife and whatever they was out to do, we were there. Thank God for his leadership, amen, that he has uh, left for us to follow, uh, following his footsteps, becoming the district superintendent. Amen. I have a lot of shoes to fill, even though he wearing nice shoes. Amen. <laughs> uh, and I told him he's the bishop. He's a bishop now. But I have to remind him every now and then that I'm the district superintendent. <laughs> I say, I hear what you're saying, bishop, but I'm the district superintendent now. And so he had to come down a little. <laughs> but I certainly thank God for him. Amen. Thank God for Lady Karen. She came over Sunday. And, you know, I love what I love about her. You know, we have this uh, don't pass me the mic thing. And she'll look at me and like, don't do it. And I'll do it anyway. And she just wrecked the house in 10 minutes and gave it back to me. And I think she grabbed a pocketbook and was ready to go. <laughs> But I thank God for them that they're always ready to do what God has called them to do. I could call them anytime, and they'll be right there. And we certainly thank God for them. Thank God for our general board member being here. I come from good stock. And the reason why I can say that, because I served in the district that his father, Pastor West, West Side. Church of God in Christ. Amen. And uh, Bishop Hines, uh, let me tell this little story. He probably don't remember when I worked in the jewelry store. <laughs> Robinson, J.B. Robinson. He came to the mall. Well, I believe they acquired that mall, Northridge. Okay. Well, he came to the mall one time and he wanted to buy a diamond ring. And I was glad to wait on him. And anybody know the status of Bishop Hines, you know, we didn't have the quality that he was looking for. <laughs> so I had to send him to our other store that, that sold the nice jewelry. And I thank God that, you know, I never forgot about that, that uh, now he's in the presidium of our church. And it gives us young people to look up to that. There's no limitation on your life where God can take you. We always say the sky is the limit, but don't you know why settle for the sky when you can bombard heaven and get just what you want? Go right to the throne of grace. And we thank God for our Bishop Hatcher and his lovely wife where the Lord is leading them and carrying them. And we pray that they reach that plateau that God is carrying them to. Let's say amen for them again. And we thank God for our superintendent, amen, the voice of our district. At this time, praise the Lord, we'll have the voice of our jurisdictional, amen, missionary, Sonia Brown is our jurisdictional secretary. Someone give her a hand as she come. The greatest secretary on this side of heaven. Praise the Lord. Greetings to everyone. And the house has already been addressed. And I stand as the jurisdictional secretary to say a few words about our honorees. 
but more specifically about Bishop Gabriel J. Hatcher Sr., a generous, just, honorable servant. So just a little disclaimer, uh, whatever I say, First Lady Hatcher, you can just say to yourself, me too. Okay. So the scripture that comes to mind when I think about Bishop Hatcher is Philippians 1, 3 through 6. I thank my God for every remembrance of you, always in every one of my prayers for all of you, praying with joy for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And the word that stands out to me is partnership. So Bishop Gabriel J. Hatcher Sr., a generous, just, honorable servant, works as a partner with every jurisdictional official, leader, and member in Kentucky First Jurisdiction. And when I think of partnership and Bishop Hatcher, I also think of the following words, joint interest, relationship, connection, togetherness, community, and collaboration. And serving as part of Bishop Fleming's executive staff, it brings together different personalities, experiences, skills, ideas, and knowledge bases. And when we all come together, it is to collaborate as partners to ensure that this jurisdiction is always doing things in excellence and continues to move forward. And that is what Bishop Gabriel J. Hatcher Sr., a generous, just, honorable servant, brings to the executive staff. So Bishop Hatcher has served Kentucky first at the jurisdictional level as an administrative assistant with numerical designation under the late Bishop Dwight L. Hager Sr. He served as chair of the Elevation Banquet for our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop John W. Fleming, and he currently serves as administrative assistant of protocol, which is befitting since he is the subject matter expert of all things protocol. He also serves on the Jurisdictional Convention Planning Committee with myself and Administrative Assistant Guyton. He works in partnership with the Jurisdictional Usher Board as well. He has served on the district level as stated by our district superintendent. Um, uh, he served when it was known as the Pentecostal District and under his leadership, it was eventually renamed to be the Bishop Dwight L. Haygood Senior Memorial District. And Bishop Hatcher serves at the local level as the pastor of Miracle Temple of Deliverance Church of God in Christ. And on a personal note, the Office of the Jurisdictional Secretary, we work very closely with Bishop Hatcher in the area of protocol. And I appreciate your willingness to share information. I appreciate your willingness to answer questions. And when you don't know the answer, I appreciate you saying, I don't know, but I will get back to you with the answer. So working with Bishop Hatcher is a pleasure and not a chore. <laughs> Inside joke, sorry. Bishop Gabriel J. Hatcher, and I don't know if you've gotten this, I've said it several times, G-J-H, and I threw the S in there, a generous G, just J, honorable H, S, servant. Generous, a giver of his time, talent, knowledge, love, resources, and ear. He gives me his ear quite often. Just, a man of integrity, sound, consistent in moral character, honorable, high standard of conduct, a man who works to see things done right and orderly, and servant. He focuses on the well-being of people 
and organizations he serves. So today, Kentucky First Jurisdiction honors Bishop Gabriel J. Hatcher Sr., a generous, just, honorable servant for the work you have done, continue to do, and will do in this jurisdiction. May God continue to bless the work of your hands as you continue to build this ministry of Miracle Temple of Deliverance. I love you both. God bless you. Again, we thank God for our Judas and our secretary. At this time, amen, we're going to have our dancer to come back. Amen. Somebody give her a, a hand. Praise the Lord. They'll fix it. And she's ready to do what she do. If I could thank you for her. Amen. God, I know that you're real. 
know sometimes, amen, when you're going through your trials and tribulations, you need God to come close. Amen, amen. Sometimes your mind messed up and you can't see your way, but you need God, what, to come close. Hallelujah, amen. Praise the Lord. I found out something, amen, when you can find a friend. Uh, when you can find a good friend, praise the Lord, it's more worth it than a million dollars. Amen. I'm going to introduce to this man, God, that's a friend to our leader. Praise the Lord. Amen. Apostle, amen, Mark Carter will come, amen, as a friend to our leader, praise the Lord. And after that, the Hatchet, um, give a Hatchet Jr., Jr., the second will come, amen, for, amen, final presentation. I'll be back. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh-oh. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The preacher is coming, so I'm going to be swift. We give God praise, and we bless him, and we thank him, and we do honor, amen, our jurisdictional bishop. I say ours because I'm a part of this church family, and amen. I'm not, I may not be in the Kojic church, but I'm a friend to a lot of people here, and so we honor, amen, Bishop John Fleming. God bless you, sir. Amen. The general board bishop. Bishop Darrell Hines, we praise God for him and thank God for him being here and to all these pastors, great men and women of God, amen, that serve as co laborers in the gospel. And we honor each and every one of you. And to my friend and friends, uh, the great, I say great, Bishop Gabriel and Lady Karen Hatcher, we most certainly honor them. I need you to put your hands together real good for them. Y'all can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe in honor and leadership all times. I'm a second generation pastor, so I know what it means to serve as well as honor leadership. Um, let, me, let me clear something up for everybody. Amen. I don't mean no harm. Amen. But I take the roles and the offices. Amen. Very seriously. I am not an apostle. I am simply Pastor Carter. Praise God. And I just want to make that very, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it how sometimes we may see one another, and I know we do that, but I don't want nobody going away thinking, amen, that I feel like that because I really don't, amen. That's, I, again, I'm a second-generation pastor. I've been schooled very well, amen. And so I praise God for how one must uh, see them. And it's okay to esteem each other high, but I don't want you to think that that's, that's my role. I'm I'm, pa I'm simply Pastor Carter, all right. Praise the Lord. The Bible declares in Proverbs 27 and 17, and you all know this, that iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. I like the word countenance because countenance speaks of composure and confidence. And most certainly when uh, we come together, uh, Pastor and Lady Hatcher and myself and Lady Carter, who sends her love and was texting me as I'm standing here to send her love to you. She must be watching. God bless you. We got you. Amen. And so um, let me just tell the truth of the matter before we go any further with this word friend. Uh, in actuality, I started out being Pastor Gabriel Hatch's friend. And then when he met my wife, he dropped me like a hot potato and made Lady Carter his friend. So she should be up here talking and not me. <laughs> but, and, and, and so uh, my friend is Lady Karen Hatcher. We friends. No, I, I just, I had to put, I, I couldn't resist it. Amen. But I do love uh, uh, our friendship and cherish it very much. We have an opportunity uh, to come together often. And, you know, you really, I, I don't have a whole lot of friends. I have a lot of people that they claim I'm their friend, but I don't make them claims very easily because I feel like friends, amen, you need to go through something to be able to test and try one another's friendship. And if you can survive it, praise God, amen, and both of you come out on top. I believe that's one of the ways that we can see that. Uh, iron, now we learn, 
is a, a tool that's used to sharpen other instruments of iron. And every time we're able to get together, we're able to uh, sharpen one another, build each other's confidence and impart to one another. And that when we leave each other's uh, presence, we're able to go out better than when we came in it. And what I love about it is, is that uh, we're able to sit around and, 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 and share uh, uh, the word of the Lord with one another. And just sometimes, Lady Karen, me and my wife, we tell her when we get with her, we say, we're coming to lay on your couch. Because every now and again, we need her to, you know, let's just step away from behind the podium and let's just talk real. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. And so we praise God that we can be ourselves with them and they can be themselves and we trust one another that we ain't going to go around talking about each other. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I, when I say friend, I truly mean it and I love them. They know that I love them. And I not only love them, but I love their children and I love their grandchildren. And I love the church, the people that they pastor. I love Miracle Temple. I love all of you as well. Amen. So uh, I just want to say that uh, I love you. I'm here to support you. You know you can call on me anytime. As you know, I'm calling on you on tomorrow morning. Praise God. I have a, another situation I need to handle for another friend. And I'm pressing upon my friends to help me out on tomorrow morning. So you pray my strength in the Lord. We're going to continue to pray for Bishop and, and Lady Hatcher as well as Miracle Temple and all of the uh, Church of God in Christ family here in Louisville, Kentucky. God bless you. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm going to make this short, try to at least um, honor to everyone in the pulpit. Um, the program says this is the anniversary for Bishop Gabriel Hatcher and First Lady Karen Hatcher. So that means this is a partnership. And, um, and so, and I believe again, the good book tells you a man that finds a good wife finds a good thing, correct? All right. So we got that out the way. So uh, my mother is his good thing, okay? And she's also this church good thing. And so, and I want everybody to know that and hear from me, that my mother, she is a good thing, not to only to my father, but to my sisters, to my kids, to my nephews, and to my nieces. And also, she's a very good thing to this jurisdiction. Everybody give me a hand. I, um, I know everyone sees them as Bishop Hatcher and First Lady Hatcher. Um, no disrespect, I see them as mom and pop. Um, they have birthed me, and uh, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be doing, outside of God, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be doing what I'd be doing today. And so I'm giving you guys honor for that. I love you. Um, it's not often you find parents, you know, I am, outside of my mother, I am the consistent musician of my dad when he started pastoring. And um, when I turned, when I graduated, he released me to move out of Kentucky and to better myself. And so um, I thank you for that. I do. Um, is, you know, you don't find a lot of pastors, be honest, you, they not going to let their musicians go. They need their musicians. But my dad, he let me go. And so um, I have, I've grown a lot. Um, I've, I've accomplished a lot. And so, and it's because of them that I, I've done that. And I thank you for that. Um, I love you. And uh, you will always be in my heart. And mom, I'm gonna give you that house that I've always promised you that I was gonna give you. You know, once I, once I get that. So, um, but again, you know, Miracle Temple, the jurisdiction, and the Hatcher family, we appreciate the both of you. Um, you guys are great parents, great grandparents, uh, pastors, because mom, she shares just as much as my dad does. And you know, it, it takes a lot for my dad when he leaves to leave it in my mom's hand, and it runs just as smooth as if he was here. So uh, we love you. Thank you.
thank God, amen, for the Hatches family. At this time, we'll turn it in the hand of our administration assistant, Gaston, and he's going to take his father. I believe it's time for my solo. I think it is. This is what's on the program. No. No. Um, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do, and I'm going to sit down. But I want to say um, to the honorees, my love, my support. Um, I'm like Pastor Carter. Um, pa Bishop Hatcher was my friend. And then he met my wife. And then I became half of a nephew. But I thank God for Lady Karen. She's always, we've always been, she's my big sister. I don't know how that works where he's my ne my uncle and she's my big sister. Yeah. But I thank God for them. I appreciate them so much. I love them. And us, Sister Brown. So I'm here to in interpresent our bishop, uh, the Bishop John W. Fleming. If you would rest to your feet at this time and receive him with the words of amen. amen. You may be seated. When you get on an airplane and the plane is about to take off, they tell you to raise the back of your seat Put the seat belt on and raise the tray. Thank God. We are on the plane today, and Bishop Hind is the pilot. So raise the back of your seat. Put your seat belt on and raise the tray because we are fixing to take off. Thank God. He is a preacher, preacher. Thank God. I remember him way before we left Memphis and went to St. Louis. I was slim and skinny. I had black hair. And he was slim. And he had black hair. But I looked at him today. I kind of uh, metastasized. And my hair went gray. But he's still slim <laughs> with black hair. What's going on here? I know he died and came back, but I don't want to do that just to get skinny and black hair. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. This is a man of God, and that is more important than any other thing we could say about him. If you look at his bio, there are several things that are interesting. Thank God. It starts out by saying he's a man of prayer. If you want to move mountains, you got to pray. Thank God. He's a pastor of Christian Faith Fellowship Church of God in Christ. Thank God. Thank God. I'm just going to skip on a few things here. He has a plaza which houses a high school and a clinic and a community outreach. Thank God. Thank God. He is the jurisdictional bishop of Illinois Midwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. And he is a member 
of the general board for the church of God in Christ. Thank God. I know the board of bishops said that they are the highest board in the church. But if you look at protocol, the general board, thank God is the board that is in charge of the church of God in Christ when the general assembly is not in session. And he is a member. The good thing about him is all of the positions he holds, his most honorable respect is to Jesus Christ the son of the living God. Thank God. He is first. So after the sermonic solo, the next voice you hear will be that of Bishop Darrell Hines, the honorable one. Again, raise the back of your seat, put on your seat belt, and raise your tray because we are going to take off. Your mercies never fail me all my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so all good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. This is my favorite part. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. When my life lay down, I surrender now. I give you everything, yeah. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Help me say. Yeah. 
Oh, oh. When my life lay down. My life yeah. Yes, I do it. Give. Give you everything. Every breath and I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Father, what a joy it is for me to stand here today before your people. And as I stand here, I do recognize my inabilities to do anything without you, but I can do all things through you that strengthen me. So I pray tonight that you would anoint me afresh today and let me minister with clarity. The word that I speak, let it bring increase into the heart of every hearer. Father, I thank you for this great occasion in which we have gathered. Thank you for this man and woman who have plowed out this portion of the kingdom. Continue, God, to use them in times like these. We need faithful servants. And now, Father, open up our hearts and ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church. I thank you now for your blood that covers me. Thank you for your anointing that rests upon me, the ability to get the job done. More than anything, I thank you for hearing my prayer, as you always do. In the name of Christ Jesus, I pray. And let every heart say amen. Well, before you take your seats, why don't you tell two or three people God has a miracle for you today. Hallelujah. We serve a miracle-working God. As I said before, what a joy it is for us to be in the house of God. Please be seated. What a joy it is for us to be in the house of God. There are several places we could be today. But I thank God that I am here in the midst of God's people, fellowshipping and celebrating this man of God and his wife who has been so faithful in plowing out this portion of the kingdom. Thank you for including me in this day and inviting me to be a part of this celebration. Uh, Bishop Hatchard and your wife. Um, Bishop Hatchard, he, he has tried to call me on several occasions and wasn't able to get to me. And uh, it's not intentionally, I'm just... Uh, terrible phone person but he gets to my wife and she gets to me and he got in the car today with me he said now that's my friend so I got here today and I realized he knows how to get to the men just get to the hearts of the wives and he can get to the men <laughs> thank you so much Bishop Hatcher for allowing me to be here of course to Bishop Flemings thank you for the introduction and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret let you in on a little secret uh, the Bible says in first Corinthians 15th chapter, the 33rd verse. Paul said, I die daily. And, uh, and uh, some of you all will get there when you get home. I mean. To all of you there in the pulpit, to all of the women here, of course, to everyone who is making up this congregation, I want you to get your Bibles. We're going to the Word of God. I, I have to leave back out today so I can be at home for my home church service in the morning. I wanted to be here so bad. Last year, I was at the airport. I was at the gate ready to check in, and they canceled the flight, and I could not get out. But I was determined to be here this year. I appreciate him. He's a kind man, and he's always reflecting the goodness of Jesus, and just thank God for him. Let's go to John, the 10th chapter. We're going to the first verse, first three verses. Of course, Superintendent Burroughs, thank you. Good to see you. John 10, 1 and 3 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. 
but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Again, the third verse says, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. I'm going to minister from this passage of scripture, a message entitled, The Shepherd's Voice. The Shepherd's Voice. Please be seated. Of course, I want to, again, I not only honor the First Lady of this congregation, but I also want to honor my wife in her absence, who I know if there's any way she can be looking at me, she is, uh, electronically. I thank God for her. I've been married to Pamela Hines. I celebrated 43 years of marriage this year. And uh, I just thank God to think of her brings joy to me. It's an interesting thing that sometimes we don't understand in America that, that we are so privileged as a people. Um, we live in a democracy. Democracy is something you should never take for granted. Communism is where you have one person telling everybody what they can do. Democracy is people telling others what we're going to do and having an opportunity to do so, which lends to give us several choices. Uh, I went to Kenya, Africa in 1985. For the first time in the minister, I was there with Bishop Moody. And um, Bishop Moody and I, we were there and we lived in Kenya. We stayed in Kenya the first few days and then we went up into the countryside where the real ministry started. And I want you to know it was one thing I had never seen before in my life. Uh, the, the roads were all dirt. The, the church wasn't a building. It was more of a structure with no windows. Uh, the floor was dirt. There were no pews in there. They sat on logs. And uh, before you got to the building or to the place they were gathered, there were just as many people around outside as there were inside. And you could smell them because they didn't have the convenience of the odorant that we have. But they were praising God like never before. I went into dirt homes where there's just this round dirt home with nothing in there but a roof, a floor, a pole hoeing, and people didn't even know how they were going to eat. But when I got back to America, I was so thankful. I was more thankful when I got back than I was before I left because I didn't realize how privileged we are. Am I right about it? We have become so spoiled with our choices. The act of choosing. We choose, we choose what we wear. Nobody tells us what to wear. We choose where we eat and how much of it we want to eat and what style of the food that you want choose how you cook it in America, believe it or not, you have seven, seven different types of vegetarians. And you got pescatarians and vegans and vegans. And people not only separate the food, now they separate it into categories. And then people will tell you what they will not eat at all. Well, y'all looking at me funny. Some of your children don't want to eat that no more. We didn't have a choice when I was coming up. We, we had to eat what was set before us. We, we, we didn't know nothing about no lactose intolerance. La and I'm serious. We didn't know about no lactose, and you tolerated everything. Uh, you'd have to get to the table early, too, because we'd eat up everything you said before us. But we've changed so over the years. Now we choose where we want to go, what we want to drive, where we want to live. Uh, we choose the people we want to be with for the rest of our lives, and we also choose our churches. But I want you to understand, choosing a church doesn't just include finding a nice building with a good band, with a good choir, a nice praise team, ministries, a convenient location. But choosing a church also means you choose a pastor. And while many churches have so many things to offer, the pastor is not just another thing to check off your list of commodities when you're choosing the church of your choice. You see, we sometimes don't understand that the pastor is a gift from God to the church. And that's spiritual. If you all stay with me just a few minutes. But that's spiritual. So when you talk about a pastor, you got to understand it's not as like you're choosing a choir or 
choosing who's going to lead praise and worship. But a pastor is God's choice. And when you choose a church, you choose the choice that God has made for you when you choose a pastor. And you've heard him referred to it twice today. And I kept note twice they quote from Jeremiah, the third chapter, the 15th verse, where it says, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. We all are familiar with that verse. But you got to understand it is the 16th verse that brings stability to the 15th verse. The 15th verse alone is not enough information for you to understand the importance of the pastor. So you have to go to the 16th verse where it says, and it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, said the Lord that they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall it be done anymore. So what God was telling Israel is that I am going to remove the ark and I'm going to give a replacement of the ark as pastor. They won't become the ark, but they will become the ark's replacement. If you don't understand what the ark was to Israel, you have a hard time understanding what the pastor is to the church. And so sometimes we disservice ourselves as parishioners to a particular congregation because we don't thoroughly understand who the pastor is to God. I'll say it again. If you understood what the ark was to Israel, you'd have a better understanding of who your pastor is to you. Jesus gave us these gifts according to the book of Ephesians. He that descends and ascends. He said, has, and now we know they're gifted people in the church. Prophets, evangelists, we understand they're gifted people in the church. People who speak in tongues. People, he, uh, the, the 12th chapter of Romans speaks about it. 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians speaks about it. But the Bible said in Ephesians that he that descends and ascends has specifically said in the church, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry. Just bear with me just for a moment. Now you understand when you look at the hand of God, you can see it in the five gifts. That's what a teacher told me years ago. The apostle, he's the thumb finger on the hand of God's government. He can touch any of the other gifts. Then you have the prophet, the pointing finger that says, thus saith the Lord unto you this day. Then you have the long reaching finger, which is the longest finger on the hand, which is the finger of evangelism. Then you have the ring finger or the relationship finger. Uh, we call it the marriage finger, but it is the relationship finger. And then you have the shortest finger, which is the teaching finger. You can consider this the governmental hand of God because it's been given to the church for the perfecting of the saints to unify us until we all come into the knowledge of God. So it's important to understand that. But of all the gifts that have been given, the only one that shares the same title with Jesus is pastor, shepherd. He is unlike any other of the fivefold gifts because he or she are stationary. They have to remain and stay with the sheep. Now, I, let me just say that again. They can't run off and leave the sheep. They have to, I was an evangelist for several years, and I would preach all over. Many times I would go in and preach so hard and, and tell people they were going to hell and they didn't get straight, and I'd cut them up real good, and then I'd go somewhere else and cut some people up. I didn't have to stay there. I wasn't the pastor. But when I became the pastor of the church I pastor now, the folk that I cut up were sitting looking at me to heal them. And I had to find another way to get the word to them because I couldn't get away from them. You see, the Bible makes it clear to us. It says to him, the shepherd, the porter opens, or the doorkeeper open it. And what does he do? He, he hears his sheep hear his voice. And that third verse says, and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Then the fourth verse says, and when he puts forth his own sheep, or when he put it forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. You see, your pastor is about more than choice. 
But your pastor is about voice. My sheep know my voice. They understand. They understand. It's not just language, but there's a sound that I get from my leader that nobody else can sound like. Now, y'all looking at me funny like you don't believe it. But there's something the church has gone through in the last three years we never thought we would live to see. This post-COVID world that we live in has left the church in a quandary. And I'm going to share with you what God told me when it, as it relates to where the church is and how important it is for us to get in a certain place because God has some work to do through us. You see, the church has gone through a unique, unfamiliar transition in the last two and a half years. We were forced to close our church doors. Thus, the routine of attending church was changed dramatically, even to the point of some churches struggling to stay current or even to exist. For many people, the present state of the church is so confusing now. With the habit of attending church on a consistent basis, it had become completely and totally disrupted. Even now, even to this day, people still sit at home in front of their electronic devices in a sincere attempt to recapture the church experience, hoping to obtain the same motivation that they had in spiritual experience in a pre-COVID world. In times past, pastoring and tending to the sheep had a specific, consistent set of duties, first to God and then to the parishioners. Now, after this COVID period, pastors have had to become electronic technicians and media personalities just to compete with the many faces that are voices that are streaming and YouTubing and Facebooking and Instagramming and so many other platforms fighting to keep the attention of the faithful members of those who consider the part of his congregation. Church members are now being so bombarded with such a variety of choices until pastors are in an unexpected competition for the very audience that he or she preached out, prayed for, counseled, encouraged, buried, and married. Y'all looking at me funny on a weekly basis. So now more than ever before, the maturity of the church. Somebody shout maturity. The maturity of the church, of the average church member, is being tested like never before. During times past, pastors could see your face, but after COVID, they had to cover your face. They couldn't see your faces, and they couldn't touch you physically because of social distancing, which completely interrupted our way of embrace, our way of encouragement, our way of fellowshipping. At the same time, you had those who are trying to take advantage of these crises by attempting to influence people to join their church electronic ministry church and to jump ship and to support them financially at this most critical time in the church hear me when I say it the maturity of the church member is being challenged now like never before so in reality this exercise of loyalty and commitment that we're experiencing is not just based on the consistency of the shepherd alone but it's also based on the maturity of the sheep as well if there's ever been a time for the church to grow up and become one that time is now as i speak this word of god our differences are fighting our bickering are getting acting funny with each other those times have to be over. The church needs itself more than it has ever needed itself before. You see, Jesus made it perfectly clear in John the 10th chapter and the 14th verse. Please be seated. I'll be finishing just a moment. Thank you. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. Just be finishing just a moment. John 14, the 10th chapter, the 14th verse, it says, I am the good shepherd. I want you to hear this. And I know my sheep and am known of mine. Two things, I know my sheep and am known of mine. That word known literally means to understand, to perceive, to have knowledge of, to become acquainted with. How can somebody get on Facebook or on TikTok and tell you anything and you don't know them? You have not become familiar with them. Your pastor has told what you showed up in the hospital prayed with you one-on-one, -on -one, has spent time with you, how, why would he have to compete with somebody who don't even know you? Why y'all looking at me like that? 
They don't perceive you. They're not acquainted with you. As a matter of fact, let me tell you this story of truth. My sister Janet, which is my eldest sister, I've been privileged to go to Israel. I don't leave the country a whole lot to minister. Uh, but I've been privileged to go to Israel. And it was a great experience. Not long after I went, my eldest sister went to Israel. And she came back with a whole different experience that I didn't get a chance to experience. She talked about the group that she was, went, went to a sheep's farm. And when they got there to this ranch or this farm where the sheep were, the sheep were over behind the fence feeding and out in, out feeding on grass. They were fenced off from about 12 or 13 people. That's who was with them. And she said the shepherd of the sheep came up to us, introduced himself, walked us close to the gate, but the sheep were back in the field. And she, the shepherd said, now I want each of you all to call the name of this sheep. Call Rebecca. And so... One by one, they stepped up to the front of the gate, and they called Rebecca. And nothing happened with the sheep. My sister said it came her time. She walked up to the gate, and she said, Rebecca, and nothing happened. The shepherd asked them to move aside, and then he went to the same place they stood, and he called Rebecca. My sister said it was amazing. The sheep parted, and one sheep came out of the fold down to the gate to where the shepherd was. She said, I saw it with my own eyes. Now, you all got to understand what just happened then. You see, everybody in that group knew the name of the sheep. But the sheep only knew one voice, and that was the shepherd. You see, the, see there's a lot of people who know to call your situation and your name. Yeah, he must, how did he know that? Yeah, they'll eventually keep calling names until they get your goat or find out your situation. But you're not familiar with them and they're not familiar with you. They're just talking at you, trying to get something out of you. But when you have a real shepherd who speaks life when you don't give him nothing on anniversary, who speaks life when you plan a trip not to be here when he comes. I know the church. You got to recognize the church is in a very serious situation. Look at what the scripture says. Now, I want you to go with me. Let's all go together. Get your Bibles because I'm going to take you somewhere and I want you to go with me. The Bible says in the 10th chapter, the first verse, important that we get this, My my opening scripture in the 10th chapter the first verse it says verily verily I say unto you he that entereth in not by the door unto the sheepfold but climbeth up some other way the same is a thief and a robber so Jesus was saying that there are those who come and approach the sheep the right way and then there are those who approach the sheep the wrong way Notice he calls them both shepherds. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now, 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 I want you to thoroughly understand this because for you to really understand what Jesus is saying in the 10th chapter, you'll have to go back and read the 9th chapter to get the foundation that props up the 10th chapter. You all know this. I don't have to tell you anything in the original text. Scriptures were not divided into chapters and verses. That was done in translation. As a matter of fact, you could take this particular writing all the way back to the 8th chapter because the 8th chapter touches the 10th chapter because it's all the same event. Uh -huh. Well, in the 8th chapter, Jesus is in the temple. They bring this woman who was caught in adultery. They wanted to trick Jesus, ask Jesus what should be done with this woman. And, um, uh, uh, and Jesus says, ye that are without sin, uh, cast the first stone. They drop their rocks. Jesus says, go and sin no more, woman. The dialogue began to come. At the end of the dialogue, Jesus was telling them, before Abraham was, I am. By the time Jesus said that the Bible said, they sought to get their hands on him, and he passed by. Well, when you go to the ninth chapter, it says, and while he was passing by, so it's the same circumstance. While he was passing by, there was a boy who was blind from birth. The question began to ask, well, how wide was he blind? Was it some sin he did or was his family sinners? And Jesus says, know that God may be glorified in him. And then he says, I got to work the works of him who has sent me. You know the story. And Jesus spit in the ground, put the clay on the boy's eye, told him to go to Siloam and wash. And he went and came back seeing. Well, everybody was amazed that this boy could see. And so eventually they took him to the Pharisees because Jesus did this on a Sunday. The Pharisees were a part of a group that taught. And then there was the Sadducees. As a matter of fact, the Pharisees and the Sadducees 
Pharisees made up the Sanhedrin court, which were those who brought, that's why they brought Jesus to when they was judging him, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they made up the judicial court of Jews. And so they were different though because the Pharisees, they believed in resurrection, but the Sadducees didn't believe in resurrection. But the difference in their teaching was that the Sadducees believed all of what the five Torah or the five books of Moses says, but the Sadducees Sadducees believed the book, but the Pharisees, they would add traditions, and they would add old sayings and make them come up alongside and make people practice those sayings just like God said it. Jesus talks about them in the 23rd chapter of the book of Matthew and tell you all, all, watch out for them, warning them. They like to show up. They want noise made. They want to sit. Get, they do want the money. Jesus talks about the Pharisees saying, woe unto them. And so here now, they bring this boy to the Pharisees. Jesus has done this on the Sabbath day. They call Jesus a devil. That this is not God, but this is the devil. They try to get this boy to say it was the devil. The boy says, I I don't know who he he is. All I know is a man named Jesus. He told me what to do. I once was blind, but now I see. I'm not in here to argue. I know. Got the boy's parents. The parents says, ask him. He knows. And so they begin to dialogue about Jesus doing this on the Sabbath day. Now, when you continue to read the ninth chapter, when you go into Jesus starts saying at the end of the ninth chapter, as he was talking about the boy's eyes, he began to speak a parable about those who are blind can see, and those who see are blind. And then the Pharisees begin to ask the question, well, are, can we see? And Jesus goes over into the tenth chapter. Are y'all here? He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Now, when you go back to the ninth chapter, I don't want to throw you off. The 16th verse of the ninth chapter says, Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division amongst them. Now, the 19th verse of the 10th chapter says, And there was a division, therefore, again amongst the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a demon and is mad. Why hear ye him? So here we see the same conversation. Now, if you understand that, then you'll understand more clearly when you read the 10th chapter every verse. Because when you understand it clearly, When you get to the 10th verse of the 10th chapter, it brings a different insight where it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that ye might have life, that ye might have it more abundantly. Now, don't get mad at me, but after reading the text completely and studying it thoroughly, I can no longer say that the thief is the devil. Now, I'm not going to tell you not to say it. You can say what you want to say. But after studying, I am assured that he's not talking about the devil here. Now, I preached that that was the devil, and I tuned up on that being the devil, and I used it as the devil. But the Bible is not talking about the devil here. And when you come into the knowledge of anything, you are demanded by God to teach from your level of understanding. That's how come it becomes difficult when you're taught one thing a long time and God brings you into revelation of a thing for you to change or to get the people who've been taught that one thing for so long to see the difference because now it has become religion and not righteousness. Y'all looking at me funny. That which you practice consistently, continually. So there are a lot of things that we do is not necessarily righteous, it's religious because we do it. God, God, religion is what we offer to God. Righteousness is what God, now, we got to understand what the thief is here. So since we know the theme is about these Pharisees, those who take advantage of people, let's look at this word thief again. That word thief in the Greek, and you can look it up. Y'all Google everything else, Google this. Don't take my word for it. The thief here is kleptes in the Greek, kleptes in the Greek. That word means an embezzler, a stealer, an embezzler, a pilferer. You keep on reading and it'll tell you 
The name is transferred to false teachers who do not care to instruct men, but abuse their confidence for their own gain. That's who Jesus is talking about here. In this dialogue with the Pharisees, he's still talking to them. He's talking to them about false shepherds, those who take advantage of the people. Now, 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 let me tell you something. And I, 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 it, it took COVID for me to see it, but I thank God I see it. Ah, cool shot. I realize now more than ever, people have been damaged by false shepherds. And the only reason these false shepherds have been able to get away with it because people didn't know how to identify them. See, it's hard to stop a thief when you don't know he a thief. But it's hard for him to steal when he come around people who know he a thief. You ever had nephews or cousins, you know, if you leave them alone, they may take something out the kitchen so you walk with them wherever they go because you know they go. It's harder for a thief when you own to him. Are you all here today? Now, again, I'm not trying to mess with nobody's religion. I'm just telling you what the studied word show us. So here, the, the thief, he comes to pilfage. He comes to take. He comes to embezzle. He comes to gain. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in the 10th chapter, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth life. But he that is a hireling, there you go. That's it right there. He that is a hireling, uh, uh, that, one, that means somebody who's out for wages, out for hire, just want to get paid, is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. Or not. See it, the wolf coming. And leave it the shape and flee, and the wolf will catch him and scatter them. So, 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 if this is the thief that Jesus is talking about, then he gives us insight as to how to see him and catch him. Church, I want you to hear it because the church has to see this in this hour. He says, first of all, he comes not but for to steal. That takes on a whole different application once you know who the thief is. Once you know the thief is the klepto, of kleptase, it says he comes not but to steal. That word in Greek is klepto. So the thief is kleptase, and, the, and to steal is kleptos. Now that word kleptos is to felch. It means to appropriate futilely. That futilely means to be done quietly or in secret, or to avoid being noticed, to be very stealthy. Do it casually. Now, let me make that clear to you. This thief is not the one who kicked the door down and said, give me all your money. That's not the, uh, that's, that's not, that ain't, that's ain't the kind they're talking about. Come on, sir. They're talking about the thief who wait until the bank is closed. I make, let me make it even easier. Make it easy. This is the kind of thief that will come in and steal you blind. Not all at one time. Yeah. So say, say, say for example, I go into a convenience store. And I want to I wanna steal the whole rack of gum. I just want to steal the whole rack of gum. If I pick that rack up and I start walking towards the door with that rack, you know what's going to happen. The, the clerk won't even have to see that. Customers will say, he's stealing gum. Everybody would see he was stealing the gum. So if I was going to felch the gum, as this thief does, I would go in and I'd buy a candy bar next to the gum rack. I pick the candy bar up and slip a pack of gum in my pocket and go on and pay for the candy bar and steal one pack. And then I'd come back another day and get me some M&Ms by the gum rack, buy the m and and stick to gum. Possible you may not ever see me if I'm slick enough, if I do it slow enough, and if I'm methodical enough, it'll be hard to catch me because I'm not trying to get all the gum at one time. I'm just trying to get the gum, all of the gum, over time. Oh, I don't want to leave none of the gum, but I can't take it all at one time. But I promise you I ain't going to stop until all the gum is gone. That's the kind of thief I am. So this thief, he takes like that. A little bit at a time. We sit down in the midst of it and don't even realize what's happening. We endure it. We hear it all the time. And we just go on and look over it. As a matter of fact, we have become almost intimidated by those who speak differently than what we do. And some of us have stopped even saying things, not intentionally, but we don't even say things like we used to. 
We don't even bring up hell no more in our church. Oh, we don't talk about hell's fire. We rarely talk about the blood now. There is a whole movement to get the blood out the church. Talking about speaking in tongues. We don't just, just come to Jesus. We don't even, some, they don't even bring up tongues no more. Why? It's because they want to steal. They want you to be happy. They want you to keep coming. They don't want you to be offended. If speaking in tongues offends you, we'll stop. Uh, uh, for, if, if, if casting out devils ain't your thing, well, it ain't my thing either. All they're trying to do is keep you comfortable so they can keep felching or taking away from you. So you'll find a whole message with no conviction. Talking about what God wants you to have and God see your struggle and God wants you to have. Y'all ain't got to like me when I'm telling the truth. We are now in this state in the church. We're at this place right now in the church. Right now we're at this place where people are now taking advantage because they don't have to take ownership. They can just take advantage. They don't have to take responsibility to God because God never put them as shepherds. And so what they do is they steal. That's the clap tokens. Am I too long? I promise you. I'm, I'm Second thing Jesus says, it says they come to kill. That word kill there is thuo. And that word there means to breathe hard. Oh, thank you, Jesus. To breathe hard. And then it goes on in the final directions of the scripture to kill and to destroy, off kill or destroy, often by fire. But the first part of it is to breathe hard, to blow smoke. Now, now, you all look it up. Don't take my word for it. So the second thing this thief does is he wants to get you burned, but he can't burn you. So, but he can put up a smoke screen, blow smoke. Now, y'all, y'all probably don't even know what that is, blowing smoke. You know, stuff that 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 don't have n nothing to do with nothing. Just, you know, we all, we all, we, now don't get mad at me, don't get mad at me, but somebody said it, there you go, camouflage to keep you from seeing the real, distract you with something that ain't real, a bunch of smoke screens, uh, a bunch, bunch of smoke screens, and, and you, you can tell if it's a smoke screen by how you feel when you leave, because smoke eventually dissipates, that's why you don't eat smoke. Because smoke, it, it, it dissolves into nothing. If you leave the church, hallelujah. And, and, and you don't feel nothing once you're gone. Either you put up a blocket or you got blocked by a smoke screen. Because when you get the real thing and not distracted by something that ain't real, can't nobody tell you that God ain't real. But when you get something that just makes you feel good for the moment, but don't come up in your spirit in the middle of the week, then you got smoke screened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me finish, let me finish. So, so, so he felches, he sends up smoke screens. And let me get the last thing. So he kills, which means he felches. He destroys, sends up smoke screens so you don't know what, what the real is. And then he destroys. Now that destroy is apolu in the Greek. That word apoluma, excuse me. That word literally means to detract from the perfection of, the wholeness of, to spoil, to seriously damage or ruin. To spoil. Oh, man. Whew. Now I'm closing. This is my first closing. I got three of them. I'm closing. Yeah, spoil something that's no longer any good, and it affects the things that it's around. Right. You don't keep a spoiled apple in a bushel, because eventually it affects the apples. So, 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 so we got some spoiled people in the church. Oh, y'all ain't gonna like me now. Oh, but I'm gonna say it anyhow. We got some spoiled people in the church. Just spoiled. Yeah, yeah. when I was coming up as a church, everybody had to get into the service. They get into the service. You had to clap with everybody. You had to sing with everybody. And it wasn't stuff they wrote down. It was just a song with a few words, and they didn't stop singing until everybody said it was called congregational songs. 
and it would be power, power, Lord. Everybody had to sing power, Lord. The babies had to sing. You don't have no praise leader singing for you. And you sitting back there trying to figure out whether or not you want to sing or make out your grocery list while they up there singing about Jesus. You done got spoiled. That's all. Spoiled. You don't even dance no more. Can't get you to You got praise dancers dancing for you. You spoiled. It has spoiled the church. No power no more. Spoiled the church. You can't even pray for your babies at home and nothing happened. You're spoiled. You want the pastor to show up instead of the pastor telling you what thus saith the Lord. You want the pastor to do it for you. Hear me when I tell you. That's what he's talking about. Church, if there's ever been a time for us to understand what we're living in, the thief is plundering our churches, our communities. He's plundering. But we got to stop him. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. We need a shepherd's voice. First of all, look at somebody and tell them, I need a shepherd's voice. voice. Never forget it. Never forget it. More than you need an evangelist. More than you need a prophet or prophetess. You need a shepherd's voice. Romans 10 and 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How can they call upon him who they have not believed? How can they believe in him in whom they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? For it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Love that verse because we rarely get that verse right. When we do that word beauty, we think God is talking about the attractiveness of a feet. Or how well the manicure is on the feet. But that word beautiful in the Greek is horaeus has nothing to do with attractiveness. That word is timely, in the right season, right on time. So when you read the text with the full understanding of the word beautiful, it will tell you like this, how right on time, or how in the right season, how right when I need it, are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings, good things. Now you all know what I'm talking about because you experience it all the time. You get up, you don't tell nobody your business because you're a little shame. Maybe something happened, you don't want to complain. And you come to church, and your pastor get up, and he starts preaching. She starts preaching, and look like somebody told them all your business. They get to preaching right where you are. You wonder how in the world did he know that? How could he have known that? Because he's your shepherd. And the reason he knows it is because God is the shepherd that's over him. And God will let down your situation and never tell him your name. Just tell him your situation. And you be trying, I got to get to the past. I got to pass. I don't know how you you was preaching right to me. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. So then faith coming by hearing. Come on, Daryl, come home. Hearing by the word of God. You got to understand, I don't care what theology, theological institutes you've gone to, how many Bible uh, uh, translations you have, there's some faith you ain't going to get until your preacher preaches it. God's going to make sure you don't see it because it's withheld for him for your good. That's what I'm talking about. So then you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you got faith. I know you can read, but there's some things God's going to leave privy to your shepherd because God wants you to know he's leading you through the man and woman of God. So Bishop Hines, what is the church supposed to do? I need everybody to get this down. Come on, take this notes real quick. Come on, wait, take them real quick. What is the church supposed to do in a day like today? What are we supposed to do in this post- COVID-19 world where there's so much that has happened that has come to trick God's people. Can't get them back to church hardly anymore. There's stuff folks say about using the internet. Now, so let, me, let me go on and close this out. Here's the solution. When you go to the fourth chapter of the book of Hebrew, 17th verse, it says, that's what I mean the 13th chapter of the book of Hebrews, the 17th verse, we know the scripture, it says, obey them that have the rule over you. Submit yourselves, for they watch out for your souls, as they that must give an account, that they may do it with joy, not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. So the first thing he says is to obey. Paul was writing to the church there, uh, and he was telling them to obey. Now, obey doesn't just mean do what I say here, because we all got that part and we don't do it. But it's broader than that. That word really means also to have faith in, to believe in, and to keep confidence in. Hallelujah. So let me say it again for you. 
Paul's writing to the church here. He's telling them not only just to hear what we say, but keep believing in us. Don't lose faith in us. And don't lose confidence in us. See, 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 that's, the, that's what the enemy does. The, the enemy, he wants to demote the influence of the minister, the pastor, the speaker of the word. He wants to demote the influence because he cannot, he cannot dilute the word. Satan can't change the power of the word. So what he wants to do is change the image of the one who speaks the word. Make you lose respect for the person who carries the word. Make you lose faith in the one who carries the word. Ah, oh, you can't trust none of them preachers. That's the devil's trick to make you miss what the word says by stumbling over somebody you have no confidence in. That's why the church has to put its confidence in their men and women of God. You have to keep their faith for them. Now, we put no confidence in the flesh, but we do put confidence in the God that's in them. We have to believe in them through this. They're going to come out of this. We have to believe even though it's hard, they're going to make it. We got to believe even though it's difficult. The church has to believe in the leadership. You, you know, it's such a disrespect. I don't have the time. But there's so much disrespect for leadership yes, sir. Thank God. until it's almost embarrassing. Yes, the lack of respect and regard we have for leaders. Oh, we stand when they come in. But as soon as they leave, we sit and go to talking about it. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a jurisdictional bishop. I refuse to let them stand when I come in. Sit down. Sit down. Don't, don't stand when I come in. I know this is going to shock some of y'all. Don't get up and honor me, everybody with microphones. As a matter of fact, don't bring me up until the end of the meeting. What? Yes. Don't bring me. I, I know I'm messing with some folks. Don't bring me up because you'll put me up and when I'm sitting down, you'll talk about what you didn't like what I did. What do you mean? That's not, oh, my bishop, he's great. And then as soon as I'm at your presence, you go and talk crazy about your bishop. He don't know what he's doing. Just don't stand up at all. Sit down. Don't call my name out. I, 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 listen, I tell, I tell him, listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to, every person's name you will send a call, call Jesus then. You can say, I want to give honor to to Jesus. I said, the more we talk about us in church, the less Jesus show up in church. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm not saying anything is wrong with it. I'm just talking about me. Because if you, you can stand for me, but then you lie on me. I don't need you standing. It don't mean nothing to stand. It don't mean nothing you standing when I walk in and when I go somewhere else, you're looking and talking crazy about me. Why are you standing up? I'm honoring the office. You're not. I didn't know honor. First of all, y'all sit down for a minute. I'm, since I'm here, I'm since here. First, first of all, first of all, first of all, you got to understand what honor is. Honor ain't talking good about people. That's complimenting. That's a compliment. You honor people with gifts, not with words. Getting up. When the Bible says he that labor in the word is worthy of double honor, he ain't talking about getting up talking twice as long at the anniversary. I'm getting in trouble now. Get in trouble. You, you honor people with gifts, not with words. You recognize me with words, but you honor me when you put something of value in my hand. It lets me know what you think about me. Second thing, I got off on that. Please forgive me. Second thing, and I know I, I feel like I'm up too long. If y'all give me, y'all give me just a few more minutes. I got two more closes. That's right. The second thing that, that I want to leave with you all, that the church has to do, we have to keep our confidence in our men and women of God. That's the first thing. Second thing, he says, do it with joy and not with grief, or that would be unprofitable to you. So what he's saying, they got to give an account for you. You make sure they can do it with joy and not with grief. Or that would be unprofitable to you. Now, I don't know about you, but that's one of the most uh, 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 revelated scriptures that I've ever seen before about my blessing. He says here that when I do what I do for my shepherds, I do it with joy. 
and not grief. In other words, I do it and they get joy out of it and it doesn't grieve them. What I do as a member, I don't bring grief to my shepherd. I don't grieve my shepherd. I bring joy to my shepherd. That's what he's saying. Don't grieve him or that'll be unprofitable to you. Did y'all hear that? Do you actually think God will profit your stuff and you're grieving the person he put in place to, to watch over your life? You need to find out. And the church I pastor is too big with members for them to come to me. And I don't know how big it is. But if you can get to your pastor periodically, you ought to get to him and say, does thoughts of me bring joy or grief? And let him answer because he'll tell you the truth. You know, yeah, you, you, you grieve me. You need to say, well, past bishop, what can I do to change that to joy? Because I can't, I can't profit. It's unprofitable for me to grieve you. Now, I know y'all ain't going to do it, but I'm trying to tell you. But that's what the word says. This is what the church has to do now. We have to honor them. We have to respect them. We have to keep faith in them. We have to make sure we don't grieve them. The world is coming after us hard enough. Third thing. 18th verse. Pray for us. Third thing. 18th verse. Pray for us. For we trust we have a good conscience. And all things willing to live honestly. He's saying, now pray for us. We hope that we've done everything the right way. There's a possibility we may not got it exactly right. That's what he's saying. Study it out. But we want you to pray for us. Not talk about us. Pray for us because our goal is to get it right. My goal is to have a clear conscience with Christ. So pray for us. Don't pray on us. Pray for us. Don't wait for the church to call a prayer meeting. Then pray for us. Pray for us on your own. Pray for us. When you're praying, call our name out. Ask God to increase our knowledge and strengthen our bodies. And God, let him rest at night, God. Do it in the name of Jesus. We built the devil on every side, God. We pulled down strongholds. We canceled Satan contract, God. Let him or her be able to go into the word and see the revelation that I need. God, pray that his strength, his help, y'all just looking at me. Pray for us. Yes, pray, pray for us. And the fourth thing you'll see happen in the 19th verse. But I beseech you that rather to do this, that I may be restored. That restored is to the former state. That I can restore to the former state to you the sooner. Y'all get to praying, we're going to get back together. Sooner than later. That's, you know what I just said? Instead of talking about COVID, start praying that God will bring us back together. Hallelujah. Start praying to God to go to healing. Don't you do you understand something? Can't nobody go to God on COVID but us? You didn't hear what I just said. Let me say, let me say it again. Can't nobody go to God about COVID but the church? If you are not in relationship with God, you don't have the right to go to God. They that come to God must first believe. Only believers can go to God about COVID. Only believers can tell God, God, we're tired of this now. God, do something. Only believers can go to God and say, God, now you said in your word that you're our healer. Only believers can go, go to God about it. Instead of listening to the weather and the news and what everybody else got to say about it. Look at somebody and tell them, I thank God for my shepherd. My second close, and I'm glad. I'm happy today. I'm happy today Jesus said in the 11th verse, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that I shared the, 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 the title shepherd with Jesus. You know, I could have been other things. Uh -huh. I was my father's minister of music. Right. Used to write songs and Send them for other people to record. I thought I was going to be a recording artist one day. But in 1981, I was struck by lightning. 
I laid dead for 45 minutes. Doctor said if he lives, he'd be a complete vegetable. But I'm so glad I had a praying mother who told the doctors, God is going to bring him out of that tonight. In the fourth night in the hospital, the Holy Ghost came in my room and said, Daryl, the devil sought to kill you. But I preserved you for a time such as this. He said, take care of my business and I'll take care of you. And I said, Lord, what is that business? And he said, tell a dying world about a living Christ. And I want y'all to know today, I'm so glad that I am a preacher. And I know everything will be all right if we just keep Holy Ghost preachers around us. I don't care if our hospitals close tomorrow. I'd be all right if you left me with a preacher. Because a preacher can tell me that Jesus is a doctor in the sick room. All you got to do is leave me with a preacher. If every psychiatrist and every psychologist stop practicing tomorrow, I'd be all right if you left me with a preacher. Because he'd tell me that God is a mind regulator and he's a heart fixer. Am I right about it? Uh, leave me with a preacher and I'd be all right if every lawyer stopped practicing law tomorrow because God tells me that he'll be my lawyer in the courtroom. Isn't it amazing that Jesus, the son of God, after he went in the wilderness and came out after 40 days being tempted of the devil, led by the Holy Ghost, he went into the temple and he opened up the book and he made his first announcement, his first publication, his first flash notice. Jesus didn't say, I am a water walker when he announced his presence. Jesus didn't say, I'm a devil chaser when he first announced himself. Jesus didn't say, I'm a dead raiser when he announced himself. Jesus opened the book and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. His first declaration to the people is that he was a preacher. I'm so glad I got preachers in my life. I'm so glad we got men of God and women of God in our lives that will tell us what thus said the Lord. And I'm like Paul today. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believeth, first to the Jew and then the Gentile. Slap somebody high five and tell them we're going to be all right as long as we have pastors. I said we're going to be all right if we got men of God that'll stand in the space of a shepherd and tell us what thus saith the Lord. You see, the problem with us is we put confidence in the wrong thing. We put confidence in politicians. We put confidence in, in, wall, in, in the stock market. But I want you to know that you need to keep your confidence in God. Look at the political arena. You have the Republicans and the Democrats. Look at Wall Street. You have an up market or a down market. And when you look at these individual groups, each of them have an animal as a mascot. The Republicans, they have an elephant as a mascot. The Democrats, they have a donkey as a mascot. When you're going up on Wall Street, it's called a bull market. When it's going down, it's called a bear market. And you got folk around here talking about, I'm a Republican, identifying with an elephant. I'm a Democrat, identifying with a donkey, saying I'm making money while the bear market is in. Well, I'm here to tell you, the last time I checked, when I looked in the Bible, we were not called bears or bulls. Donkeys are elephants. The last time I looked in the Bible, we were called sheep. And a sheep 
is the most insufficient animal ever made by God. A sheep doesn't have the speed of a cheetah. He's not the fastest land running animal. A sheep doesn't have the ferociousness of a lion. He's not the king of beasts. A sheep does not have the strength of a bear. He can't destroy with the blow of his paw. A sheep doesn't have the sensitivity of a deer. He don't even know when he's in trouble. A sheep doesn't have the brain of a possum. He don't know how to play dead. A sheep doesn't have the agility of a monkey. He can't even climb a tree. If he falls, he don't even know how to get up. Can't find green pastures. But that's all right. If I am a sheep, I said that's all right. If I am a sheep, because a sheep got something that the bear don't have. The sheep got something that the elephant don't have. You see, a sheep, a sheep has a shepherd. And I heard David say, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, but thou art with me. Thou prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely. 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 Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's all right. If I am a sheep, I got a shepherd. Jesus, my senior shepherd. Jesus, my head shepherd. And he has everything that I need. When I'm tired, he jubilates. When I'm weak, he innovates. When I'm lonely, he fascinates. When I'm friendless, he obligates. When I'm depressed, he conciliates. When I'm sick, he medicates. When I'm hungry, he cultivates. When I'm thirsty, he allocates. When the devil comes, he investigates. And he makes the devil vacate. Jesus is my delegate. Can I reiterate? Tell somebody we gonna be all right. I said, tell somebody we gonna be all right. If you can't get them to say we, speak for yourself and say, I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna be all right. Yeah. I feel a praise in here. Somebody get up right now and give God a praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, glory. Come on, come on, clap your hand and praise the Lord. Everybody clap your hand. Everybody give them praise. I know, I said I know the devil 
has got some of us worried, but the best, the, the worst is behind us, and the best is yet to come. If you believe that, I want you to praise God like you got it in your spirit. Hey, Lord. your hands. Come on. Bishop, I feel impressed of the Holy Spirit to lay my hands on both of you all and anoint you for the works that's ahead. I just want to put a little oil on you. Now, the Lord told me to tell you all now, get ready for increase. Father, we thank you and we praise you now for the increase. I know that seemed so generic, but I heard your voice to tell them to get ready for the increase because 28 is the number of life everlasting. Thank you for increase in their health. I speak directly to their health. To their finances, Father. To their church. Increase. In the name of Jesus. That's it, Bishop. That's all I need to do. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. I know this is how service would normally go, but we only have 
one day to get it right a year. I have one day to get it right, and that's today. I've already given hundreds in the first offering. But God has been dealing with me. I don't want anybody to be embarrassed, so everybody sit down. I don't want anybody to be embarrassed. That's what the enemy does. When a man of God asks people to give a particular amount, the enemy wants to bring embarrassment to you when you feel like you don't have it. Can I tell you something? People also get in their mind that they don't need it. And you got to be so careful. Notice this in the scripture. When Jesus brought attention, there's only one place you see where Jesus sits in the temple. And it's right across from the offering table. It's where they brought their offerings. And it was areas that women also brought. And Jesus spoke to this woman, this widow. He said, she's given, even though a penny, she's given more than everybody else. Because she gave from her heart. Now, to really understand what Jesus was saying, you got to hear what Jesus said about the scribes before he said something about her. He said, the scribes, what they do is they take advantage of widows, take their money, like to be seen in big costumes, want the high seats in the church while they're robbing widows. Then he talks about the one who comes and brings the offering. The Bible's amazing to me. Which if anybody had a reason not to give, it would be her because she, she saw them sitting at the front of the head table. Just and robbed them and tricked their money out of her, act as lawyers only for their own settlements. They were doing things that would take care of them, but not the people. And Jesus brought attention to that before he brought attention to the widow because the, the scripture specifically spoke about the widows. So if anybody should have had an attitude at church about giving, it should have been her. Because she's looking at them, them guys, they wearing what she put in the offering. They driving what she put in the offering and left her with nothing. You all know how we are. Look at somebody and tell him, he ain't talking about me, he's talking about them other people that won't give. Listen, that's what I want you to do. Not, not everybody can do this. As a matter of fact, if you feel offended by this at all, stop listening to me. But I feel impressed of the Holy Spirit. God has been dealing with me with the number three. And the number three is the number of resurrection in life. I want, uh, yes, Lord. 